So we'll finish off the next parts. We've got our P-trap intact. Next we wanna do is put a vent in. We've all, already got all this pre-cut in our kit. Our vent is gonna be pretty, pretty much positioned just like this. We wanna make sure that the bottom of the vent even is higher than the tray level inside internally of the unit. This allows for some air to siphon through and allows the drain to flow um, much easier. So we'll also glue all that back together. So we also need to add some insulation to that vent pipe as well. All right, that's pretty much it. Now the reason why we put an elbow on the top of it, because in a normal condition, this will be up inside a roof and there's a lot of dust build up and crap that can run straight back down into the drain. They're just gonna restrict some of that and still giving us some, some air circulation through it. So the next step will be to install the float switch. That float switch is located in here. And what that does is when the, if the drain ever blocks up, so if, if our trap ever blocks up, if this gets knocked out of position or something along those lines, the float switch will then run upwards just like this. So that's a magnetic switch and it will cut off the machine. So that means the machine will stop running, the customer wouldn't be able to run the machine and they'll have to give us a call and have to come out and rectify what the issue is. So this will limit a, um, a lot of drain leaks or drain issues because the system won't be able to be run if there's any blockages along the line. So it pushes in like that. And it still allows us to be able to remove it, clean out the drain if we need to. Um, pushes in nice and tight. Okay, so we can finish off. We've installed in the rest of the caps on the system. So there's a cap on here. Turn that around this way. That one's not needed. Pull that insulation down through there. I might put another little piece of insulation on the top there to finish it off. Okay, next what we have to do is just tape all this together so then we, we have no conduit ex exposed so it's completely insulated all the way around. Because we're up inside a roof cavity, um, the roof cavity is probably going to be 50 or 60 degrees. The water coming out of the air conditioner is probably going to be around about 5 degrees. Um, it is going to cause a lot of condensation so it's very important that we insulate as much as possible. So I'll go about and tape up all these joints and close all that up. And then we'll go on to how we wire the float switch in. There's a joint here that we want to make sure as well that we put some tape around it and make sure that's, that's all done. Just to show how well this tape sticks to the insulation, so if I put a little piece on here, right, and I peel it off, I actually tear the insulation off. So it sticks on really, really well. So duct tape is really, really good on, on this insulation because it actually bites on so well. So the rest of the parts in that, that kit that we we put together is some clear hose. Um, that's gonna be more for a different type of unit. As we mentioned, this is a Dakin system, so it does have its own flexible joiner that we can utilize. Um, these are just some clear hoses with some, some clamps, which is, I guess, another solution to what we have here that I'm um, going with different makes just to make it more universal. We can use it on different systems. These are just the leftover caps that came off the um, the P-trap, we're generally not using them anymore because we've obviously made up 
for those locations. Next, we're gonna wire in the float switch. First of all, we need to open up the electrical cover on the unit. So the control terminals on this system are P1 and P2. Okay, so first of all, we will fit our wiring through where we need it. So this is gonna be our controller wiring. I will show how this wires into the controller and switches the controller off when there's a, a drain fault. So first of all, we join one end, doesn't matter which end, into, we'll put it into the P1 terminal. Tighten that up, it's fine. Now we'll bring through our controller cabling. So for this particular system, we only need to use two of the four cables, so the other two are obsolete, we'll cut them off and get mixed up what we're doing. So really what we're gonna get is one end we need to join through here. And then the other end is gonna wire into the second terminal. I'll also install a connector on here so it isolates that cable. And that's pretty much done. So what's actually happening is the one end of the controller, one end of the cable, sorry, runs through to the controller itself. So this cable will imagine that's controlled to the setup, hooked up to the controller end. Then the signal that comes back through us runs through the switch and then back into the unit. So if there's a issue on this end, all it's doing is pretty much breaking this circuit and not allowing um, the system to operate.